Oh yes, I've made an early transfer. I'm set on my captain. Welcome to the Gianni Batici team selection video. Hope you guys are well. We've got loads to get through in the next 15 minutes, so don't go anywhere. If you fancy supporting the channel by hitting that like button nice and early and subscribing, that would mean a lot. But look, let's crack on with the FPL content because in today's show, we're going to look at Villa defenders. We're going to look at why I'm captaining someone that I think is so, so obvious this week and compare some data to him and some other number nines. And we're going to look at at my team and how I'm setting up with my future plans as well. And to help with future planning, the first thing we always do is look at that fixture ticker. Now, you guys know I like to look usually three to five weeks ahead. But I'm looking at a slightly bigger view at the moment because of future doubles and future blank game weeks. And as the weeks go on, I think by this time next week, we're going to know more about some double game weeks. But for the time being, we can look ahead to game week 26, which is when the Carabao Cup final will take place. And we can look at where there might be some blank game weeks there. Obviously, the Carabao Cup uh, quarterfinals this week. And now we know a little bit more, don't we? So let's have a look on the scout ticker. And I've gone all the way through to 26. Now, before we look at possible blanks in 26, let's just look at the teams that have got really nice fixtures. I mean, straight away, Brighton catch your eye. Worth noting, Brighton will be without the likes of Matoma and Adingra, two of their creative sources during the AFCON and Asia Cup. Lamptey's also going, that won't affect them too much. Man United high on the ticker too. But then at number three, you've got Aston Villa. And Villa's a team we're going to talk about. There's a lot looking at defensive transfers this week. And I completely understand why. Um, Aston Villa kept clean sheets against Arsenal and Man City, both at home. But look very likely to keep a clean sheet, in my opinion, against Sheffield United at home. And then it's the home form when you look at clean sheets. And they've got home fixtures coming up against Burnley, against United, against Forest. I could see cleans in all of them against Newcastle, maybe not. But some nice away fixtures in there too. The Aston Villa defenders are cheap as well. So look, we'll rank them in a minute. But let's just give the sort of helicopter view on blanks and doubles. We are due to get double game week announcements soon, I think. They will include... The Bournemouth and Luton fixture. They will include the Brentford and Man City fixture that's been postponing game week 18. Now they could drop in and around game week 20 to 22. So next week, I think we'll be able to give you a bit more clarity on that. So keep your eyes peeled. And if, you hold, if you're holding your Bournemouth and your Man City and your Brentford and your Luton players, for me, that would make complete sense this week, just knowing that there could be a double around the corner. We're also going to get double game weeks for those that have fixtures postponed in game week 26, right? Game week 26, we can see there right at the end of the ticker, includes uh, teams that will be affected by potentially getting to the, the, the EFL um, Cup final right? So they either get to the final or because of the fifth round of the FA Cup. So the fixtures at risk at the moment. Chelsea versus Spurs, Man United versus Fulham, and then I'm recording this before Liverpool-West Ham. So it could either be the Liverpool-Luton game or the West Ham-Brentford game. But look, Chelsea-Spurs, Fulham-Man United, that's four teams, two big ones with FPL at the moment, possibly three by the time game week 26 comes round. And then if you throw Liverpool or West Ham into the mix, more chaos again. So the blank game weeks from 26 could actually be moved forward. You could see some of those fixtures be rearranged before game week 26. So again, worth noting and keep your eye on this channel for more and more updates. But look, I mentioned Aston Villa defenders. I've got to show you my team and talk captaincy. The reason we like Villa defence is, well, the fixtures are there. The numbers are there, but also when you look at Aston Villa, the prices are cheap. The prices are cheap because Aston Villa haven't been priced like a title challenging team, which is what they are. So when I look and rank those Aston Villa defenders, well, straight away, someone that was getting a lot of love a month ago or two months ago, Matty Cash, off the radar at the moment, right? What we've seen in recent weeks is Konza playing right back. Then we've seen a back, well, a, a centre back pairing of Pau Torres and, and Carlos. It's worked really well. And then we've seen Luca Dean until very recently when we've seen Moreno come back. Now, in terms of upside, Moreno and Dean offer offer the whoever's at left back offers the best upside, right? The problem is is Dean's been playing really well this season. So does Moreno? get that spot back straight away? Or is there going to be rotation between the two? I think rotation between the two. What we do know is Moreno is Emery's boy. He came into Villa. He bought Moreno, who was fantastic for them at the end of last season. So if he becomes nailed, and maybe we need a couple more weeks, Alex Moreno at 5.0 would be my first choice. But if I was buying today, I'd just go cheap and go Konza. Konza's really affordable. I think he's 4.5 million. 
Pau Torres is 4.7 and flagged. He is a bit of a doubt this weekend. And then Diego Carlos, if Matty Cash does come back at right back, then it's Carlos who misses out and Konza goes to centre back. So I'd go now on Konza or I'd wait a couple of weeks to then maybe consider a Moreno or a, a, a Torres. So that's where I am with Villa defenders. We'll talk more about Villa attackers in a minute um, when we look at my team and captaincy. But look, let's check out and see how I got on in game week 17 and then my plans for game week 18. So game week 17, 65 points. I'm happy. Returns all over the place. Some clean sheets as well. Like we haven't been getting too many clean sheets from Arsenal and Newcastle and Liverpool. We all own their defenders. Well, it was nice that all, all three of them kept cleans at the weekend. Um, so there we go, fairly happy. But small green arrows, slow and steady wins the race and all that. And when I look, I was like, okay, how many times have I green arrows in a row? Let's go back and look at your season history. And you can do this really easily when you just go game week history on the, um, on the FPL website. And I can see like the first few game weeks up to game week five, red arrows. You expect that at the start of the season. And then I had a green and a few more reds. But from game week 10, I've only had one red arrow and that was in game week 11. Since then, game week 12 all the way through to 17, greens, greens, greens. You can see overall rank there has gone from like, uh, you know, a wild card in game week 10 um, went into a 4-4-1-K. Then I'm down 4-3-3, 3-5-1, 3-1-7, 2-9-8, 2-4-1-1-5-5. So it's eating away, you know, 50 to 100K. You take that every week, right? So may that continue over the um, the next few weeks. I would absolutely love that. Let's see where, where I end up. But look, how am I set for game week 18? Because I've already made an early transfer. On the bench, Gabriel and Taylor not expecting points there. I want to hold Foden because I think Man City are going to get a double soon. And when they do get a double in, say, a 21 or a 22, I want to be on more Man City players than just Erling Haaland. So holding Foden this week means I need to strengthen my 11, right? Which means my eighth attacker, Mabama, rather than being able to bench him, because I'm benching Foden too, I need to upgrade Mabama. So Watkins has come in and I've beaten the price rise on Watkins. So he has gone up to 8.7 this week. He's had two price rises. Um, I've benefited from one. I paid 8.6. He went up, I think, on the Saturday night and then again on Tuesday. So I've bought Ollie Watkins on the Tuesday night after the first Carabao Cup quarterfinals. You might argue, wait for more information, but this is a week we're not going to get a ton of information. And there's very few midweek fixtures. So I've done it before the Liverpool West Ham fixture. Okay, fine. I think I'm okay with that. I risked one Premier League fixture, um, but no other teams in action. Um, and of course, it's a Thursday deadline. So we're not going to get all the press conferences. I think we will get an Emery press conference before the deadline because Aston Villa play on the Friday. Um, so worth monitoring that. But I can't see there being an issue by jumping on Watkins and beating that point one. So that's a move I was going to make. And I did a poll the other day. 95% I asked, are you going to own Watkins by game week 18? I think I asked it on a YouTube live on this channel. 95% of people said they will own Ollie Watkins by game week 18, if they don't already. So in other words, if you don't own him, you're buying him this week one way or another. Most will sell Darwin. I think I'm happy keeping Darwin for a couple of weeks because I'm not expecting much. He's been rubbish, but it's just a way of strengthening my 11, as I mentioned. The plan is game week 19, hopefully I can roll. Game week 20, I then sell probably Darwin to go Haaland back in, right? And I do that by getting some funds out of Mo Salah, who's about to go to AFCON in 21. So that's how I'm set. The back line, you could argue... Do I need to make a defensive transfer? But by making a minus four for Pedro Porro a few weeks ago, I don't think I need to. That was my only four-point hit of the season, by the way. Um, the Aston Villa defenders are nice, and I would love to be able to gamble on a Reno or go straight to a Conza this week. And maybe that move is an extra move I have to make, and Simakas has to come out, for example. But for the time being, I'm all right with Simakas. Robertson's not scheduled back for a couple of weeks. Lascelles should get a, a fair few more games because there's the share injury. Also, he's been the captain and playing so, so well. Um, and Pedro Porro's flying, and Gabriel's got some good fixtures around the corner. I've got Dubravka in goal, again, safe for a while. And then the midfield of Son, Palmer, Saka and Salah. And then up front, Solanke, I think he's going to get good points over the festive period. I'm really pleased I bought Solanke. And then Darwin, don't expect much. But what about captaincy and Ollie Watkins? We have to talk about Watkins because for, for many, it'll be a three-horse race this week. Do you captain Salah? Son or Watkins. They've all got home fixtures, but because Salah's fixtures so hard to predict against Arsenal, I'm ruling that one out. I'm not going to be captain in Mo Salah. 
So then you look at Son and then you look at Watkins. So let's have a look at some data. I got this from Scout. And if you want to really dive into data, check the Scout members area out. There's a link in my description. But so there's very little between it until you look at the opponents. And you have to look at the opponents. Now, there's, there's pros and cons for both. When we look at the stats, it points to Watkins all day long. 22 goals conceded on the road. That is more than any Premier League club this season. No Premier League team has conceded more goals on the road than Sheffield United. Therefore, Villa's fixture is as good as you could ask. Probably if they would say, put a fixture down on paper, they would say Sheffield United at home. And you might say Chris Wilder effects tighter at the back. If you watch that second half against Chelsea, they made Chelsea look like Brazil. Honestly, Sheffield United are still loose with a new manager. When you look at Everton at the back this season, they've been pretty good. They are top half. They've only conceded 11 on the road. They've been keeping clean sheets recently as well. So Everton are a much harder opponent than Sheffield United. It is, however, worth noting Everton had a midweek game and they're not used to that. So Everton had that penalty shootout against Fulham on Tuesday night that they lost. It was a one or draw in the game. So Everton, could they be a little bit tired? Yeah, you can spin that narrative. But for me, you just look at the narrative of Villa's home form, Watkins being on form, but most importantly, Sheffield United being so, so poor defensively, even with that back five. So for me, I'm going to be captaining Ollie Watkins this week. And, and that's why. I think, I think the data is there to back it up. I think Son is a very good shout. And if you want to go a little bit different, Son's a great shout. You could go even further and go different, I think, with a, a Mo Salah. But for me, I'm, I just don't love that fixture. That fixture could go and be a 3 all, which is great for Salah. But it could be a 1-0 Arsenal win as well. You just don't know. Uh, you can't bank on Liverpool winning that fixture. I feel like I can bank on a Spurs win and I feel like I can definitely bank on an Aston Villa win. That's how I feel. God, don't clip that if I'm wrong. Um, so I think that that's where we're at. When we talk about Ollie Watkins as a supreme asset, I want to just compare some of his numbers with, say, a bad number nine in the Premier League. And I saw these graphics on Twitter when I was scrolling yesterday. FPL Radar, check him out on Twitter if you haven't already. He produces these, these, these graphs, it's data comparison, but it's all on percentile to other players in their position, right? So this is comparing Ollie Watkins and Rasmus Hoyland, for example. Game weeks 1 to 17 with other number nines in the league, right? So where do they rate amongst other number nines? Now, in terms of percentile, remember 100 is the, the top, 100%, right? In terms of percentile, Ollie Watkins is always above average. Though 50 would be, if you're above 50, right, you're, you're above average in terms of your position. But look, he's always hitting the 66 is his lowest. He's always hitting high 70s, 80s or 90s. So for key passes, 97. For minutes, 97. Pretty much no other striker in the league is better than him for those metrics. Shots really high. XG really high. Bonus super high. Really good, really, really good. When you look at Hoyland, he never hits over 50 other than for key passes. He doesn't get the shots, he doesn't get the XG, doesn't get the minutes or the bonus or the carries or the passes. It's just a bad asset. And this really helps us when we're comparing FPL assets. Great FPL asset, rubbish FPL asset. And that's where we're at. And when, when, I, when I look at buying players, these metrics are all really important. So just wanted to show like how elite Ollie Watkins is. Now, sure, we're comparing him with a bad example. Maybe in the future, we'll compare him with some, some, some more players to, to show you quite how good he is. But just seeing those percentile numbers, you won't really find a better number nine in the league. For his price as well, he's amazing value. Erling Haaland and Ollie Watkins, there's very little between them when you look at points this season. Very little. Like I'm blown away by how how many points there's there's four points between them. Um, Harlan's been really good, but there's four points between little Ollie Watkins at eight point seven and Erling Haaland at thirteen point nine. It's worth noting that. Um, so guys, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's stream and I hope you enjoyed the team selection video that I did with FPL Chai. If you've not seen that, go check it out. FPL Chai is ranked number eight in the world. He's made his YouTube debut on this channel in the last couple of days. We've got more videos planned with Chai as well. So make sure you're subscribing if you want to hear from the world number eight, who's not at Haaland all season and only just wildcarded. Um, we're going to do some tips videos with him team selection videos with him moving forward too. So likes and subscribes are welcome. Hit the notification bell. I'll see you very soon. Good luck in blank game week 18. Don't forget the Thursday deadline and I'll see you on the other side.